Hey everyone, Pastor Drew here at Spirit in the Hills Lutheran Church. I'm out on the front porch of our office and learning building at our new space. And you're going to see me here for the next few weeks. We're going to do something different in this gospel reading and sermon video. I'll be sharing some other voices. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, I want you to hear uh, others proclaim the gospel. You've been hearing me consistently, and I will continue to do so. But I want to take this time to listen to these other preachers together uh, and to take some time to reflect. So in this video, I'm going to introduce our preacher for the week. I'm going to invite us to reflect on the gospel and on their sermon together uh, and the comments to this video below, as well as uh, during our time together live as we worship uh, Sundays at 10 online. You can see behind me our worship space, and as it gets developed, I might be in different spaces and continue to give you updates as those things go. The other reason that I want us to listen to these other voices is you heard me talk about last week, Jesus' invitation to come and find rest. Well, it's really important to find rest, and I'm trying my best to model that. It's really hard to find rest when the world seems turned upside down, and yet God says, come to me, you that are weary and heavy laden. And by... Inviting others to preach in this way, we'll get to hear God's word from them. I'll get a time of rest and I get a time to learn alongside you, as well as a time to focus some of my energy and effort on things that aren't sermon writing and planning. As important and crucial as that is, as much as I love that, there's a lot going on right now in the life of our congregation and our world, and I want to be able to spend some time on those things as well. So today, and for the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear uh, some other wonderful preachers, uh, leaders from our synod, the Southwestern Texas Synod. Today's preacher is Deacon Darcy Middlestat. She's the Bishop's Associate for Communication and Faith Formation, and she's going to preach on the text from Romans as well as on the gospel. And I wanted to lift up these questions and to offer an introductory reflection for you today. So a couple of things to keep in mind. This is the parable Jesus tells about the sower and about God sowing seed on different kinds of soil. And so I want you to think about what these different types of soil are and how we experience all of them at different times. Good soil that's fertile, soil that's been changed into a hard path that's in need of nutrients and that's so packed down that it's hard for seed to grow before something comes and sweeps it away. Soil that's let these thorny weeds grow so that it's hard for anything that's planted to take root and to breathe. Soil that's filled with rocks so that you can't dig down deep and find rest. About these different types of soil and then think also of how God is the one doing the planting, but God also plants on all these types of soil. What kind of good news does that grace fill you with that God doesn't see bad soil or rocky soil or thorny soil and decide not to put seed there? God plants the seed of God's grace and love and mercy everywhere on any type of soil. But we can help cultivate the soil. In fact, it's part of what humans are called to do. Think back to Genesis when we're called to have dominion and steward the resources of the earth. We're called to help make good soil. So here are the other questions I want us to think about. If we're called to help make soil good, to cultivate it so that it receives God's word, what are the thorns that we need to cut away? What are the things that are choking out the things that God is planting? What can we strip away so that others can breathe and the things that God plants can grow? What rocky soil do we need to break up? Maybe it's spaces of injustice. And we need to move these stones away as God moved the stone away so that Jesus could come out into new life resurrected life? Where have we made a path that we should have let the ground rest instead? 
think about those things and share your responses in the comments. This is a conversation that we can have together as we listen to Deacon Darcy read the gospel and preach God's word. Again, we're so glad that you're here with Spirit in the Hills. And I'm here at our new space. I hope that uh, you get a little bit of a glimpse of it. and You'll get to see it change and develop over these next weeks. Uh, I might even move us around and give a little bit more of a tour. But let's read, uh, let's listen to this sermon together. Let's read the gospel and hear this word and reflect together on how God is calling us to be good soil and to help cultivate good soil so that the seeds of God's love and peace and mercy and grace that are being planted all over the place can take root and can grow and flourish until we see each other again grace and peace be with you the holy gospel according to matthew the 13th chapter that same day jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables saying listen a sower went out to the sow and as he sowed some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth in the soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, Psalm 30. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yield, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Who are we in the flesh? We are male and female. We are mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, friends and colleagues, and so much more. We are also children of God, and we are simultaneously sinners and saints. As Martin Luther states, simo ustis et peccata, which means that we are at the same time both righteous and sinful. We are justified by grace alone, but we remain sinners. It is just as I am, a Korean American, in that I was born in South Korea, and so my flesh is of Asian descent. But at the same time, I am an American, in that I am a citizen of the United States, raised in a white culture. Before we delve into the Romans text for today, let me give you a little history around this text. Back then, word was spreading like wildfire about Jesus after he was crucified, buried, and was resurrected. The apostles were empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak other languages and the good news started traveling. Paul wrote the letter to the Romans in the late 50s AD when he was traveling as a missionary in Corinth 
It was around 20 years or so after he quit persecuting the Christians and then he became one. He wrote to the growing Christian church that was spreading through Rome, which was mostly, com mostly comprised of Gentiles. Romans was the last written of the seven New Testament letters that modern scholars attribute to Paul and has seen the greatest theological treatise in its time. It is interesting to note that also Martin Luther described Paul's letter to the Romans as the most important piece in the New Testament, its purest gospel. It is well worth a Christian's while not only to memorize it word for word, but also to occupy it daily, as though it, it was daily bread of the soul. So in our text today from Romans, the eighth chapter, Paul tells us that the spirit gives us life. He goes on to tell us that the flesh is in conflict with the spirit. Now notice the word flesh in this context does not have anything to do with our physical bodies, but it has everything to do with our sinful nature. Because we are born sinners, we often fail when trying to do good all the time. Let me speak, unpack that sentence with some examples. Since we have been dealing with racial tension in this past month in our nation, I want to use systemic racism as an example. Systems have been put into place by and for the privileged, whether we realize it or not. For example, have you ever noticed that in some stores, you will find black hair products in a different aisle than the Caucasian ones, and sometimes even locked up? Perhaps I've noticed this because of my own situation. As I have said before, I am an Asian in appearance, but grew up in a white culture. Or to put it more bluntly, I have Western privilege, as I can't claim white privilege because I am not white. In an Asian American webinar, I learned that as we as Asians are often thought of as honorary white people, because we are generalized to be smart and to fit into the white culture easily. Because of my place, of what this culture has taught me and the access I have into the many systems of my upbringing, I have been led to inadvertently oppress my black and brown siblings in Christ. So I am part of the problem. I need to stand up for my black and brown siblings in Christ. So even though I try to do good, I am still a sinner. And in Genesis 1:27, it says that God created humankind in God's image. God intended for us to be good, but because of sin, we fall short. Paul also refers to the flesh as law. And by that, I mean in our sinfulness, we rely on our own understandings and think we can do things better or that we know the right answer. And so we don't rely on God. In this tumultuous world that we live in, many of us think we know what is right. There is so much information put out by lots of places, right or wrong, that we have to decipher. Sometimes it does not make sense. And this is leading us to not loving our neighbors. But if we would rely on the spirit, which leads us to Jesus's command to love one another, including our neighbors, as the gospel tells us in Matthew 22, 37 to 38, we would be right with God. We are human and are often judged and condemned by our actions. But in Christ, there is no condemnation. For if we have the Spirit of God in us, we are set free. For the law of the Spirit of life has set us free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. In verse 10, it says, If Christ is in you, 
Even though your body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. If we live according to the flesh, we will sin and die. But if we live with the spirit guiding us, we will live. We know we are sinners, but God sent Jesus to die for our salvation. And because of that, the spirit is within us, which also makes us a saint. So what does Paul have to say about the spirit in us? The spirit of God dwells in us. The spirit is life. God gives us the spirit so that we might choose life in Christ rather than death. And the spirit who gives us life is the same one who raised Jesus from the dead. We are in Christ because Christ's spirit lives in us. And being in Christ Jesus is more than putting Jesus memes on Facebook. And it's more than just showing up for a Sunday live stream worship or even trying to be Christ-like. Being in Christ is a new way of being. Think of it as a new system of living that is centered on Christ and surrounded by Christ. So what if we had a new system of living by helping the unjust? For example, we would not be a bystander and let injustice happen, but instead be an upstander. Meaning if and when we see injustice, we step in, we speak out, and we do something. And it's not enough just to read books or articles or watch movies about people of color. We have to be proactive and put actions into our words. So what would that look like? I want you to imagine for a moment if you had a friend or a relative that sees things a little differently than you do, and he or she decides to post something on Facebook. Maybe there's strong opposing views, especially around white privilege. How might you engage that relative or friend in conversation? Or would you? Would you call them out on Facebook? Or would you invite them to have conversation via Zoom or a phone call? We need to change. We have to change. We are no longer held back or condemned because we are in Christ. The Spirit is the unseen power of God who carries out God's purposes in our life and in the world. Paul says that the Spirit helped raise Jesus from death, proving that Jesus is really God's Son and that God's Spirit works in the lives of Jesus' followers to help them from the power of sin and live a life pleasing God. God strengthens and renews believers through the Spirit. In today's Gospel, we read about the parable of the sower. How is it that the flesh and the Spirit are related to this parable? People of color in the flesh often walk the hard-packed life of prejudice, a path where not much grows, where life and opportunities are too quickly snatched away. They know what it's like to live between a rock and a hard place. On the rocky ground, life withers because it can't put down its roots. There's no security or stability when the sun scorches. They often walk amongst the thorns of violence and fear and anger and poverty. I'm sure that those thorns wrap themselves around them, choking away dignity, security, and trust. But my prayer is that through the Spirit, they can stand in the dark, rich soil that nourishes life, love, and hope. And we ourselves in the flesh know the beaten path of life. We've stumbled through the rocky patches of life. We've been scratched and cut by the thorns of life. And yet the Spirit has planted our roots deep in the sacred soil of life that feeds and grows us to become a harvest. In one case, a hundredfold, or 60, or even 30. Living in the flesh and having spirit in us is part of our daily life. The good news is that we always have the spirit on our side. The law reminds us that we are sinners 
and the gospel reminds us that we are saints. As Barbara Brown Taylor shares, God has given us good news in human form, Jesus, and has even given us the grace and the spirit to proclaim it. But in the freedom, we sometimes lose our voices to forget where we were going and why. So as we live in this world, as a sinner and a saint, as one condemned by the law and freed by the gospel, remember, we need to look with compassion on others as they struggle. We need to celebrate with others as they succeed and to recognize that though we are imperfect people, we are perfectly loved by God. We are both sinner and saint. We are flesh infused with the spirit. Let us pray. Loving God and holy baptism, you have gathered us together across all human divisions and reconciled us to yourself in one body through the cross. Strengthen us now by your presence that our thoughts and actions may be rooted and grounded in your love for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.